Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be showing you a solar panel powering a motor and talking about a few concepts um, about power efficiency and uh, power conversion. So without further ado, uh, let's go and uh, run along the cable. This is a 18 watt solar panel, so it's potentially up to one amp. But uh, across all this wire and with its uh, reverse voltage diode and all of the alligator clips uh, with wire resistance, it's going to be pretty low. So here we go, and uh, I apologize ahead of time for the mess of a rat's nest of wires. Um, I would have used uh, these uh, drivers that I designed, but I, I came across a few problems with some uh, gate drivers exploding and such. So uh, that's why I have a mess of wires here, uh, to show you it regardless. Uh, so if we look at the scope here, we see that for a given pulse, we have a rising edge and a falling edge. Okay, so the slope of this in the red is our inductor charging. And when it charges, it stores uh, all the energy that goes through the motor in the magnetic field. Uh, when I load the motor down, you can see that uh, this slope actually increases quite substantially, um, which means that we are still storing energy. But when I go to a point where I heavily load the motor, you start to see where the voltage uh, plateaus. And this is the point of saturation. And this is bad because we can't actually use this energy. This is wasted energy. So we want to always make sure that our slope is linear so that uh, we aren't wasting any uh, useful energy uh, going to our boost converter. Okay, the yellow slope is just uh, the dissipative falling edge. So the energy in the inductor is being released uh, going through the flyback diode into the output capacitor and consumed by the light bulb load. Okay, and that's happening right here. So uh, some considerations for this, oh, and of course, uh, our MOSFET that switches on and off, uh, and our Hall effect sensor, uh, which I have here in the, the brush, se brush section, and uh, some neodymium magnets to determine when to pulse. So I have a firing, uh, a firing angle. So if you watch carefully, I'm going to take the lead off of this, uh, this bulb. And when I do so, the voltage focus, is going to increase like so. And this will actually increase uh, to quite a high value. And I don't really want to burn out this uh, meter rated for 100 volts, even though my capacitors are rated for double that. Um, but on the scope, if I can do this, you'll see the, uh, the yellow slope is going to actually decrease with an increasing voltage. That's because the inductor um, magnetic field is collapsing faster to produce a larger output voltage. And that dissipates uh, the power stored in the inductor faster. And what that's actually going to do is that's going to tighten our firing angle so that we don't have a situation where there is a lot of uh, uh, reverse torque after we get up, get to an unsuitable location to, to be pulsing and producing uh, a magnetomotive force uh, for the motor to produce mechanical power. So we could do that by increasing the output voltage. In a traditional uh, snubber uh, configuration for a motor with a uh, flyback diode, just uh, shorting out the inductor um, to get rid of the uh, the inductive spikes. What we see is the largest current uh, through the inductor with uh, no power at all, obviously, because uh, it's just a short circuit across the resistance of the windings. And uh, the motor is actually running uh, poorly. It's running very slowly. Uh, and the reason for this, we can see it uh, on the scope, you see that the, the discharge falling time in the yellow has ballooned out to, uh, to 16 to 18 milliseconds. And uh, what's happening there is that we're now providing a counter, um, counter torque to the motor. So in, in red, we're providing positive torque, and in yellow, we're providing negative torque across the non-optimal firing angles. And, and that results in a slower 
motor operation. 